Hi everyone, it's been 8 months since we moved back to Penang and live like a local. This has given us a true insight to the various costs one spends in Penang. So this is 8 months of data compiled for you to give you a real sense of the latest cost of living in Penang 2023 edition. So why Penang? It's got the sun, sand and sea, surrounded by beautiful hills and lush greenery. Yet, it is a modern city with a great quality of life. Oh, don't even get me started on the food. My taste buds has never been more alive. Come discover this sunny island for yourself. Hi, I'm John. Together with my wife, Fran, we are the corporate breakout couple. We retired young in 2020 at the age of 40. We would appreciate if you would smash the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel as it will help us to create more videos like this for you. Now, let's talk about everybody's favourite topic, inflation. Since three years ago when COVID happened, inflation has been rampant globally. If you look at recent articles, inflation has popped in 2022 to unseen levels in decades. Using the United States as a benchmark, you can see that there's an increasing year-on-year -year price on consumer goods, such as basic essentials like eggs, bread and fuel. It's no wonder the US Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, has been aggressively increasing interest rates in 2022 to curb inflation, such that the rest of the central banks are following as well to keep the price of consumer goods for people like you and me to affordable levels. Therefore, Malaysia is not spared from inflation either. That's why you see articles of Malaysians exercising prudent spending in this year 2023. So you may ask, how is the cost of living and inflation related. The cost of living is the maintenance of a certain standard of living. Therefore, the prices of consumer goods determine your cost of living. One of the key benchmarks of inflation, whether in Malaysia or globally, is Consumer Price Index, short form CPI. And why is it important? Because in Malaysia, 70% of the CPI comprises of food, transport and housing, which is in our everyday use. That's why with the year-on-year -year increase, especially in the last three years, inflation has really directly impacted our cost of living. One of my main purpose in creating this video is to bring awareness to you about the ever-changing global economic conditions and how that affects Malaysia, such that you can manage your finances better to prioritize your budget towards your needs first, followed by your wants. In this video, I will cover the cost of living in Penang on your basic needs in five categories food, groceries, transport, accommodation and healthcare. Remember, I'm covering basic needs, so the items that you are seeing are the basic staples that the average Penang night consumes day to day. Every price you see will be quoted in Malaysian Ringgit. Are you ready? Let's jump in! So what type of food does a typical Penang night eat every day? Well, let's ask one. Hey everyone, I'm a Malaysian and a proud Penang night. Malaysians love their food. It's their favorite topic and they can talk all day long about it. You know, recently I saw an, uh, an interview by Michelle Yeoh and she could not stop talking about all her list of favorite food. It was hilarious and as a Malaysian, I could not be any prouder. So Penang is a melting pot of different delicious cuisines and there's something for everyone ranging from the hawker to the cafes to the small time restaurants and the big restaurants. So today we're going to cover it all for you. The first category I'm going to cover is hawker food. Hawker food is the basic staple of every Penang night whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner or supper there are delicious options all around. So this is a staple for Malaysian breakfast, Kuih Dao Teng, and this one comes with duck meat. This is the famous Penang Hokkien Mee, and this is Fran's favourite version. Oh, look at the broth and look at all the colours. And this, this is my favorite wonton mee. See, it's black black one. Ah, and this is very unique in Penang. One appetite. 
So if you have a Hainanese egg and toast set, or sometimes you pair it with nasi lemak and kopi, it will cost you somewhere between 5 to 7 ringgit. So this is a delicious packet of nasi lemak, which is full of egg, ikan bilis, and the sambal is just delicious, and it's usually paired with a cup of kopi or kosong. In Penang, besides Cha Kui Tiao and Asam Naksa, what else are they known for? They are known for Nasi Kanda, which is an Indian Muslim cuisine where you have rice and mixed dishes and you have a lot of gravy and a lot of curries that's mixed inside. So the price of Nasi Kanda depends on per person on what dishes you select. It can range somewhere between 8 to 15 ringgit. If you're ever in Penang, having a Cha Kui Tiao is a must. Well, we brought you to one of the best ones. Mm, the aroma, the wok hay smell. And Cha Kui Tiao is best paired with a cooling seaweed and lemon tea. And of course, there are many other Cha Kui Tiao options which are cheaper in Penang that can range between 6 to 7.50 depending whether we want egg or no egg. So this is one of my favorite dishes, Mi Bandung. It's a very popular Malay dish. As you can see, it's chock full of ingredients. You've got your egg, you've got your prawn, and you've got pieces of meat, and the gravy is to die for. And it's best paired with ayah syrup limau. And this is John's dish, it's bihun goreng, with a lot of uh, ingredients, again, with the meat. You've got your egg, and you've got some tau kwa. is a must-have for supper Maggi goreng with a fried egg on top so delicious and what is John having roti chanai with the delicious kwa it's a mixture of dal and chicken curry and fish curry as well so good and to wash it all down teh tarik but you must ask korang money because it's very sweet If you are in Malaysia, Ramdi Burger is the best. Mwah! Sedap! The second category is neighborhood and fast food restaurants. Now, the price point for these restaurants are typically higher. However, people eat it one to two times a week. How much does McDonald's in Malaysia cost? A medium Big Mac meal will cost you $15.85. Over here is an example of a neighborhood restaurant. The locals call it Zhu Cha. So for four people, if you come here and eat, which let's say you order two protein dishes, two vegetables, that will cost you roughly between 80 to 100 ringgit, which works out to be about 20 to 25 ringgit per person. So we are in a typical Malay restaurant and we are having uh, a sit-down dinner and usually this is about around RM20 to RM30 per person. The third food category are Western cafes. Cafes are everywhere in Penang. You are looking at Italian pasta, specialty teas, you're looking at coffee that's brewed by baristas, cakes. So the price point for Western cafes is typically higher than your neighborhood and fast food restaurants. So the cafe scene in Penang is pretty typical and it really blossomed over the last few years. So we are in a typical cafe right now and as you can see the food is de nicely decorated and the price point is between 40 to 80 ringgit per person. My fourth and last food category is specialty coffee and bubble tea. Why are they basic necessities you may ask? Of course they are. Malaysians drink it every single day. Tea Leaf is a super popular bubble tea brand in Malaysia. One regular milk tea costs you $8.60. So how much does Gong Cha, another bubble tea chain in Malaysia, cost? A regular milk tea with pearls will cost you 10 ringgit. As Starbucks is an international brand, it is not cheap at all in Malaysia. One grande cafe latte sets you back at $15.90. If you're ever in Malaysia, Zeus Coffee is a must try. They offer a huge range of coffee selection. Come, let's go in. As you can see, their coffee are affordably priced. And like I said, 
coffee is a necessity, not a luxury. So this is a typical wet market in Penang where you can buy fresh produce of all varieties and the price is normally 20, typically 20-30% 20 cheaper than the supermarkets. Mercato is one of the popular supermarket chains in Malaysia. It is usually located in the shopping malls. A one litre carton of milk will set you back by 880. So how much does a block of butter 250 grams cost in Malaysia? It costs 13.88. And how much does a 2 kg cooking oil cost? 15.35. What does a carton of 10 eggs cost? 8.10. How much does a loaf of white bread cost? 3 ringgit. Let me bring you to one of the upmarket supermarket chains in Malaysia. A pack of 500 gram pasta will cost you 530 over here. A box of Kellogg's Corn Flakes, 275 grams, will cost you 688. And a jar of Skippy's peanut butter, 500 grams, will cost you 1699. Majority of Penang Knights uses two main modes of transport. Motorbikes or cars. Public transport is also available, however, it's not the best way to get around. Ride hailing such as Grab is available, however, not quite economical to use it everywhere. Motorbikes in Penang Island is a popular mode of transport. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to show you an example of a used motorbike that ranges between 5,000 to 15,000 ringgit based on two different websites. So how does one buy a motorbike in Malaysia? You typically take an 80 or 90% loan of the bike based on personal loan because personal loan has better interest rates per month and you typically service a tenure of 60 months. As for petrol, there's three main types that Malaysians pump, RON95, RON97 and diesel. Now let's run an example of a motorbike that costs around 10,000 ringgit. These are assumptions used. It's a used bike that's less than 200cc. You're taking a personal loan of 80% based on 0.22% personal loan interest rate and 60 months tenure. The cost is 10,000 ringgit. The loan amount is 80% at $8,000. The interest plus principal, if you work out the math, will cost you $9,056, which brings you to $150 per month. The total expense for the motorbike per month assuming you're pumping four times which is eight liters per pump at two dollars and five cents per liter for ron 95 this is your monthly installment your petrol cost will work out to be 65 dollars your road tax plus bike maintenance plus insurance and parking based on an estimate will bring you to 35 dollars per month which brings you to a grand total of 250 dollars per month Let's talk about cars. There are a few national car brands which are very popular among Malaysians. One of them is Peradua. And the model that they like is MyV. As you can see, MyV is a very popular car on the road. And the example that I'm going to use is this 1.3 liter MyV, which is around 32,800 ringgit over here. As you can see, there are some exclusion of processing fees and other charges. So I'm going to round up this price to 33,500. Here's the cost breakdown. These are assumptions that I'm putting in. It is a used car at 1,003cc and you're taking a personal loan of 80% at 3.2% per year with a 9 years tenure. As I mentioned, the price of the car is about 33,500 ringgit and the loan amount is 26,800. That brings you to a monthly installment of $320. Here are the total expenses of the car, based on the assumptions of 4 pumps a month, which is 28 litres per pump, using a RON95, $2.05 per litre, the money installment is 320 petrol per month is 230 the road tax, car maintenance and insurance, and parking as an estimate will bring you to $235 per month, bring you to a grand total of $785 per month. Let's talk about accommodation. Typically, people either rent or buy. 
For the purpose of this video, we are going to go with the assumption that it's a couple without kids that either rent or buy for a condo unit that costs between 200,000 to 400,000 ringgit. This is us on the ground giving you real scenarios on the various options out there. Over here, I'm going to show you two types of accommodation, one which is rental, the other one is home purchase. Both examples will be residing in this area called Bayang Baru, which is the south side of Penang Island. As you can see, from property listing sites in Malaysia, you can find units going for 1,000 ringgit for areas in Bayang Baru. And some of the units come fully furnished, for example, this one, there is a tree bader. Here's the cost breakdown for the house rental. These are the assumptions. It's in the Bayang Baru area, you're looking at a condominium that's either two or three bedder, and I'm costing for one half of a couple staying. The cost of the monthly rental for the unit is $1,000, which means it's $500 per half of the couple. For the total expense, the half rental is $500, the household utilities with electrical and water inside is one half, that's 50 ringgit. For internet, for one half is 40 ringgit, and for your personal handphone is $50. That brings you to a total of 640 ringgit per month for your house rental. Now let's take a look at home purchase. For Bayan Baru area, you're looking at around three to four hundred thousand for a unit over there. The example I'm going to use is this one that's priced at three hundred sixty-eight thousand dollars for a three bedder. Let's take a look at the interest rates. So because the Federal Reserve has been hiking rates for the last two years, interest rates has been going up for Malaysia as well. So for the calculation, I'm going to use a 5.1% effective interest rate for the mortgage. So for a $368,000 house, a 80% loan will be $294,400. The interest at 5.1% with a loan tenure of 30 years brings you to around $1,600 per month. Let's take a look at the cost breakdown. The assumptions are, it's in the Bayan Baru area, it's a three beta condo and I'm costing in for one half of a couple. They're taking an 80% loan, a 5.1% interest per annum and a 30 years tenure. The price of the condo as mentioned earlier is $368,000. The mortgage loan works out to be about $1,006 per month and the property tax is about 4% of the annual value working out to be $600 per year after 12 months division is $50 per month and that works out to be one half of a couple for 825 ringgit. The total expense, the mortgage loan is 800 ringgit, the property tax is 25 ringgit, the household expenses for electrical and water for one half is 75. If you notice, it's slightly higher than the rental. Same for the internet, it's 100 divided by two is 50 ringgit. For the personal handphone, slightly higher as well, 60 ringgit. And that brings you the grand total of 1,010 ringgit per month. The standard of healthcare is very high in Penang. Whether they are government or private hospitals, they are all easily accessible in Penang Island. For more serious conditions, the cost varies. It depends on the nature of your condition and the type of treatment that's required. For your local neighborhood general practitioner, a trip to the doctors will cost you 30 to 80 ringgit. Consultation and medication. So, I have a few questions for you. Are you aware of your monthly spend? Which items are you spending the most money on? Are these items needs or wants? In my opinion, knowing the cost of all these items which I presented to you is great. But how do you make sense of these numbers? How do you put two and two together such that you understand the cost of living better? So let's do something fun. Let's build two different personas with two different budgets. So we have the budget sensitive person and the average consumer. The two different budgets which I will be building are based on basic needs. And I don't mean by living by bread and water alone. I will give you an accurate, realistic representation of the two different personas. The budget sensitive person will have a lower budget than the average consumer. My assumption for both personas is they are one half of a couple with no kids and their age ranges between mid-20s to mid-30s. For the food category for the budget sensitive person, the assumption for one month is 30 days. So this person eats out for 15 days and eats in for 15 days. For the eating out days, my assumption is based on hawker food mainly and this person goes to the neighborhood of fast food restaurants two times a month. 
So 15 days of eating out based on three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and added in one small kopi, which costs about two ringgit in the hawker stall. This brings you to 22 ringgit per day. So the total expense for the food category brings you to 15 days of eating out at 330 ringgit, 15 days of cooking at home. So typically you have a savings of 30 to 40% compared to eating out, which are bringing a medium amount of 35%, which costs you 215 ringgit. And two times a month of eating at either neighborhood or fast food restaurants, which cost $25 per meal, that brings to 50 ringgit for the month. And that is a total of 595 ringgit for the budget sensitive person. Now, what about household groceries? This includes basic necessities like your household items, like washing detergent, cleaning fluids, and toilet paper, etc. Basic necessities for yourself, which includes shampoo, body wash, tissue paper, etc. Please note that it doesn't include any food groceries because it has been costed in the food category. And an estimate will bring you to around $80 per person per month. For transport, we will be using the earlier example of the person riding a motorbike which brings you to 250 ringgit per month. For accommodation, we will be using the example of the rental which for this budget sensitive person which brings you to 640 ringgit per month. Let's look at healthcare. Healthcare is a very important category as it is a very important basic need that we should be costing in in our budget. So for insurance, based on a basic health insurance coverage for life and critical illnesses, we're looking at a basic hospitalization plan. Typically, it will cost you between two to three hundred ringgit per month based on a five to six percent estimate of your pay. What about medical? If you're looking at four times doctor's visit, a year based on $160 a year and two times dentist visit a year which will cost you roughly around 240 ringgit this brings you a total of 34 ringgit per month after you amortize the amount for the year so your total expense for the healthcare category for insurance and for medical will cost you 234 ringgit per month so let's look at the total expense for all basic needs for the budget sensitive person for food 595 ringgit for groceries 80 ringgit for transport based on motorbike 250 ringgit accommodation based on rent 640 ringgit medical 234 ringgit and that brings you to a grand total of 1799 ringgit per month which is roughly around 420 usd let's break down the budget for the average consumer for the food category, this is the assumption based on 30 days, 13 days of eating out mostly at hawkers, 13 days of eating at home, which is cooking at home, and 4 days of eating out, which includes neighborhood fast food restaurants and cafes. So for 13 days of eating out, the per day cost for 3 meals at hawker stall, this will be higher than the budget sensitive person. Breakfast at $6, lunch at $8, dinner at $10, and this person will be buying a bubble tea for these 13 days at 8 ringgit. That brings you to a total of 32 ringgit per day. So for the total expense for the food category for the average consumer, you're looking at 13 days of eating out at hawkers, which is 416 ringgit, 13 days of eating at home, because there's slightly more expensive ingredients used than the budget sensitive person, we're looking at 30% of 416 ringgit, this brings you to 291 ringgit for cooking at home. For 4 days of eating out, I'm assuming 1 fast food restaurant and 1 neighborhood restaurant and 1 cafe for the 4 days times 4, that brings you to 400 ringgit and that's a grand total of 1,107 ringgit per month. For the groceries category for the average consumer, the assumption is this person spends more than the budget sensitive one. So the same items for basic necessities, your personal items, and this exclude all the food groceries, this person spends roughly around 100 ringgit per month. So for the transport category for the average consumer, we're going to use the example of the person owning a car, which brings you to 785 ringgit per month. For the accommodation category, we're going to use the example of the person owning a house for the average consumer and that brings you to 1,010 ringgit per month. For the healthcare category for the average consumer, it is assumed that this person will spend more on insurance than the budget sensitive person. So this person will spend 250 ringgit a month. For the medical, it will be spending about the same 34 ringgit per month. 
and that brings you to a total expense for insurance and medical to 284 ringgit per month. Let's summarize for the total expense of all basic needs for the average consumer. For food, 1,107 ringgit. For the groceries, 100 ringgit. For transport based on the Malaysian branded car, 785 ringgit. For accommodation based on the purchase of a house, 1,010 ringgit. For medical, 284 ringgit. That brings you to a total of 3,286 ringgit per month, which is roughly around USD 768. Now, I've presented to you two different budgets based on two different personas. So what is the difference between them? As you can see, this budget sensitive person spends way less than the average consumer. This person eats at home more, therefore spending groceries at wet markets for locally produced items which are cheaper than supermarkets, and goes to hawkers more than eating at cafes or restaurants, rides a motorbike and rents which is cheaper than buying a house. On the other hand, the average consumer spends way more because this person eats out more, spends more money on restaurants and cafes, have more specialty coffees and bubble teas, shops at supermarkets, drives a car, and also owns a house. Even then, the spend of an average consumer is a realistic representation of your average Penang night spending day to day. Everyone's circumstance is different. If you notice, what I have been showing you are the true costs in the eyes of a local Penang Knight. The permutation can look very different, for example, if you are a foreigner who wants to work here. Because you have different needs, your budget will look very different. Or if you choose to retire in Penang, like me, a Singaporean, the budget can look very different as well. At the end of the day, everyone's situation is different. It depends whether you are staying with your parents, for example, if you stay in a very big landed house, or certain part of your cost is offset by something else. So it's really up to you to craft your own budget based on your own unique circumstance. I hope I've given you a good representation of what are the everyday prices in Penang. But you do notice that I have not touched on something at all, which are your ones. Hey, who can resist good shopping online or going to malls to buy stuff, to buy electronics, to go to the Pasamalam to buy snacks or even luxurious goods? These are all ones, right? So in my future video, I will cover on ones that includes items like your entertainment, interstate travel, electronic goods, etc, etc. My last question for you is, are you building your budget systematically starting from your important building blocks of your needs first followed by your wants or are you just spending without recording or budgeting anything at all do comment below it'll be great to hear from you we hope this video has been informative and of good value to you do like and subscribe to our youtube channel as you will help us to create more videos like this for you